Well, mailbag time. Got some interesting stuff here. Stuff here to review. This is one of them. I think there's something else. Stick around to find out what they are. The links to these things down below, wherever possible. Ah, okay. All right, excellent, excellent. These are some modules. So these are got high side, low side. So these are bi-directional level shifters. So you have high voltage this side, low voltage this side. So these are meant for going basically between 5 volts and 3.3 volt systems. I needed these when I was working on a project recently when I was doing a CB radio conversion. And I needed to include my own microcontroller to interface with the radio to do a channel conversion on it. So I needed some of these at the time, but I managed to work around it and got it something to work without level shifters. Unfortunately, these have only just arrived. Definitely links for these. Level shifters are very useful things to have, and I did actually have some, but they weren't the right ones. I wanted some which do bi-directional. Now these are like the ones I had. So this, TX and RX. So these ones are for UART systems. So you have TX and RX coming in and out. Okay, so this is a UART level shifter. And the ones here are usable on I2C, ITC, whatever you want to pronounce it. And also SPI, it works on that too. Because there's so many channels you can just use an SPI on there as well. That's why I've got those as well. Two different types, bi-directional and unidirectional. And these are the ones I really needed. And now I've got them. So now my bodges to get the job done. Also, don't forget to just click subscribe and like if you like the videos. So this is a Victron V Direct cable. It's basically a serial communication cable. So you've got a USB port on one side and a 0.1 inch header on the other side which plugs into Victron equipment which is, supports the V-Direct cable protocol. You don't actually need one of these cables as such. You can just use a standard serial communication converter, you know, USB to serial converter, like you use for programming Arduino and stuff like that. You can use those, but they're not isolated. This has got built-in isolation. So you can have multiple devices connected up and not have them having issues with ground loops and stuff like that. I have one device, one Vitron device, and so I just need one cable. I might be a link for this because I got this locally off of uh, someone that was sending one they didn't need anymore. So maybe I'll do a video about it later on. Who knows? Oh, no, no. Can't that might be a mistake. It does actually have a tear tab. Should we try using that? So we have a MagSafe to MagSafe 2 converter. Yeah, I know these are for old devices. I actually have a MagSafe charger, which I use in the bus for some of my old laptops. And I also have two laptops there which I could potentially use. One's MagSafe, one MagSafe 2. So I thought I'd get a adapter. So I'm going to stick this on the thing and have to save one charge and deal with it that way. And we've got Thunderbolt cable, 0.5 meters. Nothing too exciting about that. That's the port type, a bit like display port, but different. It's been bugging me that my cable management on my desk here for my computer is just really ugly. I don't seem to have enough USB ports. And I've got these hubs sticking out everywhere and it's running slow sometimes. And I want to try and get a hub set up using a Thunderbolt cable. So you, this type first, and I've got a the Thunderbolt 2 to you, Thunderbolt 3 adapter, and then that would go to a powered hub. And then I can then try and split off that and get a high speed USB instead of sharing a USB interface across a hub and having issues with interruptions. So I thought I'd try that. This is a review item from BenQ, or Bink. I don't know, you want to, oh, I'll call it BenQ anyway. It's an Idea Cam S1 Pro. It's basically a souped up webcam. It's um, meant to be quite good. They approached me and asked if I was wanted to do a review, and I went, Webcam? Why not? I'm always interested in webcams because I use them for my live streams, and so I'll only be doing testing on this thing. I'll do a review video on this thing, dedicated review for it. I'm not going to go into full detail on this one. Let's give you a little bit of a brief overview so you can have a look. USB A cable. There's the camera itself, and it's got this bracket you can mount on stuff. It also does quite close stuff. There's a the bracket, which is actually really heavy. And yeah, I have to figure out exactly how to mount stuff. But yeah, it's uh, basically a nice webcam, apparently. So we'll give it a try. We'll do a review on that and see how that comes out. Watch out for that one. And you've got like a remote control for it, too. I believe you can use this for doing things like... Um, online chats and stuff like that. I think it's some software you can use with it. Little dongle for the remote. Anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll get to this. So it should be interesting. I'm gonna try this out on live stream as well. So that'd be good. And that's what I was looking for. Conference camera. I knew it was in there somewhere. Got a DigiKey box. 
Right, so in here, what do we have? Bi-directional IC translator. So this is a TCA 9517DR. Is that right? 9517DR? Yes. So there's a little SO8 packages. So these are level shifters as well. I thought I'd get some of these because I might be able to use this in projects. Could be useful. There's been plenty of times I wish I could do level shifting on things and that would have been good instead of trying to do some kind of work around or you know, transistor logic level shifting, which has worked fine, but you know, just slap an IC on and be done with it. It might be quite nice. This is exactly the same as the ones I just showed you, basically. Just different branding. Somebody else made these ones, and this is also more expensive. <laughs> so the first lot was from AliExpress, and this is from DigiKeys. You can get them from there too. Yeah, anyway, I think it's a spark phone one. And here we have a big capacitor. What's this one here? 4700 microfarad, 20%, 100 volt screw terminal type. So this is for a project, well, the full piece of test equipment I've been repairing, or well, have repaired. I was looked at the time and thought, well, I'm not going to bother replacing these caps because they're bloody expensive. But how I am is that I like to have things fully restored and like to a point where I know that if I go to power that thing up, it's going to be good. In fact, I didn't replace the caps. It's been bothering me for, well, since I did the video, which is know, a month or so ago, a couple of months ago probably. So the fact I didn't do those caps has been bugging me. So I'm actually going to go back and redo those caps. I mean, they measured kind of okay, but I, that's not comfortable. Here's another one. 13,000 microfarad. Yeah, 13,000 microfarad, 40 volt. 36,000 microfarad, 40 volt. These things are expensive. 10,000 microfarad, 40 volt. So you've got some battery holders. These are used on some equipment I repair, like FarmTech timers. I get these from DigiKey. Um, I can't get them directly from the supplier, or well, the manufacturer of the timing equipment, but I can get them from DigiKey. It's actually cheap, I'm not sure actually. But I've got 10 more, but a lot of these things being bad. I've actually been supplying replacements for people at events quite often recently, and my stock's getting a little bit low, so I thought I'd get some more before I run out. General purpose relays. Double pole, double throw, 2 amp, 3 volt. There's a 3 volt relays. Yeah, anyway, that's what they are. So the coil this end, it's, uh, that single pair of contacts there is coil. These are a pair of contacts this side, pair of contacts the other side. Double pole, double throw, like I said, pretty simple. But these are three volt, which means you can run these off a microcontroller, or potentially off a microcontroller with a relay driver, so it should be like a transistor switch or something, but you can drop that voltage down slightly from the switch. But these will still activate with those voltages, so that's good. 3.3 volt minus 0.6, potentially, if you're using a silicon type transistor. So you can get down like 2.7, which is fine for these. So now we've got a signal box. Now this wasn't actually in the mail. This was hand delivered to me by Rob from Siglum. Tabagas Technologies, local New Zealand agent. He came to me, he said, look, I'll, I've got an item that you can review. This is on loan, I might be keeping this. Manual, there you go, there's Rob, address, the details there, tailtech.co.nz. If you're New Zealand and you're interested in some Siglum gear. So obviously, this is what it is. It's this oscilloscope, which is the SDS 800X HD. So this is out very soon. It's not actually in the market yet. This is a preview unit. These are not currently available, but they'll be available any day now. For the time you see this video, it'll be very, very soon. Rob is quite impressed by this particular unit, and he wants me to have a look at it and see what I think of it. So I'm going to be doing a review on this thing. USB cable, power cable. Yeah, blah, blah. All right. <laughs> uh, SAG1021i. Waveform generator. 25 gigahertz. Function generator. USB power. It runs on signal gear. And try it from, I think the YCE segment gear can actually run that one. Much like the 1000 series, the 1000 XE series has. This is a 1016. This is logic analyzer, appropriate for it. There's a cable. HDMI type port, S bus port. The actual logic analyzer. There's a port which goes onto the cable. And there's the S bus connection. So this is what's used on some of the other segment gear as well. Is it the 1000 XE's got this, is it? This is the SLA1016, which can be used to interface to it. So this works on some scopes, not all of them. Depends on the application. Like these, which you stick onto these and you hook up to your gear which you're trying to test. And obviously this goes on the end of that cable, which plugs into the analyzer. Silicon leads, that's really nice, actually. So watch out for review for this as well. Should I give you a little look at the scope? Now I think the review for this will be coming out after this mailbag, so probably... I expect I'll be doing it this week, so watch out for the review coming out this week, which means it'll be out. It's likely I'll be releasing the review for this in a couple of days' time, so watch out for it coming out.
What's it got? Scope probes. Because this is a four channel scope. I'm not going to unwrap it yet, I'm just going to show you the packaging. Yes, she is in this black colour. I won't unwrap it yet. So there's the S-Bus port, which is for logic analyzer. Single USB port in front there. Combined vertical horizontal controls. That's getting fairly common these days on smaller devices. Maybe even you, quite big ones actually still have combined controls. You get used to it. I don't really see a problem with single com combined controls. I mean, independent controls is quite nice, but you get used to using separate controls. Another USB port will cover ports, LAN port, and pass file trigger output. That's output, not input, no internal trigger. I'll be doing a review on this thing, so watch out for that coming out very soon. Now my desk is a mess. Great. <laughs> Subscribe over here if you're not already subscribed. Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel and help me to buy test equipment to do repairs on, or review, or things to fix, or even just stuff for mailbag, like I've done here. All that money helps. I recently purchased a piece of gear which was paid completely by Patreon supporters. I've been saving the money up for a while, and I bought a piece of gear recently, completely paid for by Patreon supporters. That is brilliant. So that's coming very soon, it's on its way. Also, down below, there's more videos to watch. Stuff in the description too, look at playlists, anything you might be interested in watching, like just, for example, test gear reviews, like this. There's a bit of playlist for these, and other repairs and things like that. We have on tinkering with. Catch you later.